What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Hello, good morning, everybody. Got a pretty interesting deck for y'all today on this Wednesday morning. Uh, a little bit of history here. Um, people have been talking about NT Shadow for a little while on the channel, and obviously, like, there's like this. This is a pretty o exciting overlap, right? Uh, Death Shadow plus Street Wraith plus NT. Street Wraith plus NT, very very powerful combo. We're playing the the Mono Red NT updated uh, <laughs> NT Asmo deck uh, with with these two cards, and like this is like. This is a pretty exciting uh, package. Street Wraith also very good. Death Shadow and NT giving Death Shadow Trample is is also very exciting. And we've been talking about this on stream surely for like a month or at least. And I've just been like, I really wish there was something else. I really wish there was like one more card like Street Wraith, another way to incidentally trigger NT. Uh, and then yesterday we played against MTGO user Mario Gomez and he was doing it. He didn't have anything else. He just had the street race, and it looked pretty good. So, I I built this list. I started playing it off stream last night. Um, Mario's list is also like very confusing to me. I'll say this: um, I haven't, we haven't seen it. I've I've played against it twice now. Actually, I I played against him last night during my practice league, and I went I went like street race Ragavan, and he just typed in the chat same deck question mark, but it's not the same deck because I'm very confused because he's playing Dragon Rage's Channeler. Playing Mishra's Bobble, playing Teamer Battle Rage, um, playing Teamer Battle Rage. <clears throat> there's one other card. I think there's one other card that I saw that I'm not playing in the list. He's also playing Stacklight Stalk or Stalker, which I actually like a lot in this deck. Um, well, I, I can kind of talk about how I, I got here in a second. I will also say Scourge of the Skyclaves has been very good for me in my testing and looking very good. Also, we played against Mario yesterday. Card is just like like I think one big problem with Scourge of the Skyclaves or it has two big problems. It's it's pretty weak against Solitude and it's pretty weak against Dress Down. But those two cards are just not very popular in modern right that right now. You know, for uh, so many people go on about how crazy Solitude is. It's so strong. People even like unironically want Solitude banned. The card sees very little play in modern. It sees play in blue white control, four color Omnath, and then like random brews and like. Blue White and Four Color Omnath combined, may, maybe on a good day, five percent of the meta being like very generous. Uh, although I guess Four Color is like a little bit on the uptick, but Dress Down also not that popular at the moment. A lot of people are like kind of switching to Engineered Explosives, which is also good against us. But Explosives because of Rhinos. Um, but yeah, Scour Scourge looking very good. I think Stalker is a really ideal card to like because one thing with Scourge is your opponent has to be below twenty for you to play it, and having going Stalker into Scourge is a good way to like consistently hit your opponent on turn two um but yeah i was very confused on how mario had drc plus bobble plus like any of these cards like like i, I it's probably like you i i decided to play questing druid by the way instead of drc bobble it's a light splash for, of green for questing druid questing druid is a great card to splash because th you almost always will be playing seek the beast before the questing druid and so you just don't need green until like until much later, and Seek the Beast can also dig you for, for green mana too. But like, I'm just trying to figure out like what eight cards are different. Like maybe you play two NTs? Maybe you play 18 lands? Maybe it's something like this. 18 lands, four DRC, for Bobble. I have been kind of considering uh, going back to straight Rakdos. Cutting four Questing Druid, cutting either four Ragavan or four Stalker. There's a chance that Stalker is just better than Ragavan in this deck, I think. Um... Where you could like actually hit your opponent on turn two if they play a turn one creature, so you could play Scourge, um, and play and play DRC Bobble instead, and then at that point you're up to eighteen uh, spells that trigger DRC, which is like an okay number, but ideally like a, a little more, but eighteen is like okay. Um, I also ended up. Oh yeah, I, I also also he was main decking TBR. I think TBR is a great sideboard card. Uh, actually I actually had three in my practice league last night. I decided to go down to two. Could go back up to three though. I think this card is very good in the sideboard. You want it against scales, you want it against um uh Yogmoth, you want it against Living End, you want it against Tron, you want it against Titan, but you really don't want it against like, you know, decks with removal. And I I I, I so I, I sometimes you could bring like an extra copy as like a flex spot too, but it's a very high variance card. I think these high variance cards tend to play better in the sideboard. 
Is Soul Guide Lantern better than Nile Spellbomb when you have black mana? Um, yeah, these are mostly anti-living in sideboard cards, and I, I'm pretty scared of Leyland of Sanctity. And when I, when I mostly just want these against living in, I'm okay to play Lantern over Nile Spellbomb because of Leyline. Um... There's there's very little else like you you could you could bring these in against Murktide but we already have like terminates for Murktide in the third uh, third push I don't really want to be bringing in too many cards in that matchup. Incredible memories of Agonim's Awakening, recurring Luris, and the Rogue Package package. I rem I don't think I ever cast Agonim's Awakening to return creatures whenever I played it. Come back second bolt. Probably need one two bolting collapse. Need them for sure. You you could play them. I don't know. They're they're okay. Any success with the Ascendancy build? No, it was pretty bad, but it was pretty fun. No artifact specific hit cards, but three explosives in the sideboard. Why don't nurture peatlands? I, I, I'm a, a big hater of those cards, I don't know. They're okay, but like I would rather just have like a like like, like which card from my deck would you cut? Would you cut a fetch land for nurturing peatland? How would you how would you include nurturing peatland in the deck? Like, I remember when I when I played Grixis Shadow, I like never liked Fiery Islet. I, I don't know, I, I played it for, like, a very small amount of time, and in a feeling I just wanted another, like, fetch land instead. Okay, opponent, let's... I kept seven. Mount Doom. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'll play Peatland over Mount Doom, probably. Yeah, I, I know what Molten Clubs does. You could definitely play it, for sure. You could definitely play it. I encourage you to include it if you would rather play it. Opponent, please. <laughs> Tink, 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 tink. Scape shift. <laughs> pause, 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 pause. Ink moth. <laughs> Hammer surge. <laughs> Hi, good luck. Have fun. Three minutes later. <laughs> Upkeep stop. You have six shocks. You can easily cut one. I, I wouldn't. I, I think I, I usually like this formula of all these sh uh, six shocks. But you could, you could, you could cut one if you'd like to. Would you cut Overgrown 2 or would you cut blo uh, Blood Crypt in the Black Red deck? Sorry, I got water. I'm back. Okay. Welcome back. Obviously awkward if my opponent untaps blisters on one and kills my shadow. I also have so many opponents keep hands like this against me. I don't know. So many one land keeps. I'll kind of book up three is plenty, especially when I fetch a green shaker. Okay, th thank you for the feedback. I, I'll consider it. I immediately draws the land. Could you DRC Bobble over Stack Light? Well, that's eight cards. Stack Light is four. I think you could cut. I think you could cut Questing Druid uh, for DRC Bobble is something we were considering. But you know, Questing Druid is also that card selection. Yeah, we do get to play a four-four Scourge. I also could play Stalker <laughs> or Wall of Roots in the Scourge. You're in stub. This is, uh, I don't think, a very good stub deck. We have. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. Run around the lands. So I probably have to. Let's see, so if I bolt my opponent, they're down to 13, 7 power. Yeah, I think I would need to save the bolt. And, like, bolt whatever they cauldron onto. Their hand is Halfling, Hypatra, Halfling, Seed of Hope. Although, notably, they didn't block. Bolt them down to 13, 7, 8, down to 5. Yeah, let's, let's, um, get them to 5, then go up to 8 off Seed of Hope. Seed of Hope is so interesting in their deck. I mean, I just don't know that I feel like I need to kill any of these. Maybe, maybe Hapatra wants to get bolted. I can even like stalker kill Hapatra. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolt them. I think. 
And do I want to go down to 10, I guess? Or sorry, not 9. We're playing with Sonote Scout and Yogg. Interesting. I, I like Sonote Scout a lot. Okay, so the hand is Hapatra, Halfling, Halfling. Oh, they milled Yogg for Cauldron, too, which we just kind of can't beat. Tough game, tough game. Feels like I got this main thing. Well, kind of. Not like, not like in a very consistent way, right? <laughs> so many colony gardens. Fun at one land keep, four lands in play, turn four. And a land in their hand, too. They got the Verdant Catacombs. Is Seed of Hope good? Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I haven't actually seen Seed of Hope in... Oh, they also didn't... They didn't Cauldron Yogg, which is very... Or Gris, which is very... It's got to be wrong, just wrong, right? I think I hold this for uh, Inti, because that seems like the main way we could win. How close is Yogg to being in the Mori deck? I mean, pretty far away. You have, I guess, I mean, Cauldron and Court of Calling away. So we'll have, assuming not a lot of changes about their hand, we'll have two turns to find Inti, because after that they can minus the Grist and kill my Scourge. Isn't four seed, four cord, kind of getting close to unacceptable miss rate for a seed of hope? No, if you have only if you only have seven misses in your deck, you're like you're probably like ninety eight point five, something like that on the the calculator. I did the math recently, although I did it wrong the first time. Population size fifty nine. Successes in population fifty two. Sample size two, successes in sample one. Yeah, 90, 98.7. Pretty fine. This has just one loyalty counter. All right, let's chill. One more turn. I did do some work on Hellraiser last night. Y'all baited me into it. Um, I did. I did make a tiny bit of progress, actually. I feel. Yeah, they're cooking for sure. Really, did I've been so impressed with Tidebinder. Yeah, Tidebinder is so good. I want to play the Jeskai deck again. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've just been, kind of been so obsessed with Archaeologist lately. Like, Archaeologist and Sunken Citadel, both of these cards, I've just been... Just could not get enough of them. Okay, so bringing the TBRs. Push. Terminates. Monkeys out. I guess against their build, I, want, I like Bowmaster more, so I'll trim a Druid. So how do you feel about turn one, Thoughtseize into Double Stalker Fetch? I think I like it. Playing your Jeskai list, it's always fun matches really nicely. Yogg matchup is really fun, because every single you make... Yeah, I, I, th I, that's, I was definitely trying to have a good Yogg matchup with that list. I, for right now, I'm kind of between that, that, that list and the... Um, the Intiasmo deck from yesterday for tomorrow or for, for the challenge on Saturday. I guess I'm kind of soft to the Shieldred, so I could take the Shieldred. I could take the Halfling on the push. I think I'll just take the Halfling and keep them with two mana shy of being able to play Shieldred. They also have a lot of Colony Gardens in the deck, uh, so it's like even if they... And then we're just going to trade a Stalker for a push. But they have they have a lot of uh of those, so maybe they'll be kind of weak to that. Although if I if I had drawn this fatal push return, maybe I take the their push. 
That's what it is. I think I'm just going to go get another Blood Crypt here. I don't have the Questing Druid. Don't feel like I'm under a lot of pressure to get green. It'll be a while since until we cast this. There are actual RCQs this weekend if you have QPs. I saw there's one on Monday. Are these QP onlys? Right, they are QP onlys. This one is at 3 a.m. my time, and this one's at 9 a.m. on Monday. So I, I guess I need to do a QP. Count. I don't have that many. Playing too much arena. I have 34. I should have enough to play the one on Monday. So they play their forest. Um, trying to think what situation I want to fetch. Don't think there's much reason not to play the land. So this does have menace. If my opponent wants to use the bowmaster to trade for the stalker, they'll have to double block. Do you think three of inspector two particularly changes the Boris Convoke deck? <coughs> um. Well, I mean, it changes in the sense that, like, I'll probably put them in, you know? I'm a Bant Ephemerate deck with Archaeologist. The thing is, I took really close to having a proper split of Ephemerate targets and his Archaeologist would take a look. I'm going to push the deck deck. I, I have a list like that, too. I mean, I, I would take a look. We have, I have, um, I, basically for me, that deck kind of morphed into the Jessica deck. I have like, like basically all these are archaeologist uh, Bant ephemerate piles. I guess not all of them have archaeologist. That one's uh, mono white. <laughs> Thought I had one finished. Oh yeah, this one's getting this one's like close to finished. It's more like a. Trying to figure out, like, can you is archaeologist like enough to fuel temporal trespass? Is trespass like kind of okay by itself? Probably not. I take a look though. Then a shielded ballista, three mystery cards. Yeah, I think I had tidebinder in a lot of builds, but it's like you have six, nine. 12, 12 three drops is just so fucking many. Oh, you have a Trevor's Trespass too. When you're playing a binding mana base, it seems fine. 20 lands is like certainly too few. Or 20 lands too lure and reveal too for pretty. Maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay actually. Kind of borderline. Could sack the stalker. I think I need to spend my mana seeking the beast. Found a fatal push, so we'll push the bowmaster end of turn, untap questing druid Thoughtseize probably. Questing druid's so nice. There's the colony garden we were talking about. So if my opponent goes untapped land, ballista on two, then they go ping my questing beast. I respond, push the quest, push the ballista, counter trigger goes on the stack, then they can't kill my questing druid. So I take the shield druid, play blood crypt untapped. And all the time play questing druid, have you, have you actually found the beast? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Still seeking. Look how happy that halfling is. Don't think we push into turn. Uh, TBR is like it's it's so tough here that we just we have to fatal push in order to get uh, ferocious. How many injinks did you get while streaming? Uh, I mean, uh, zero. Uh, yeah, the Sinitsi deck wasn't uh, very promising. Kind of obviously, I guess, in retrospect. 
<laughs> it was very fun to play around with. All right, so let's push the halfling, TBR the druid. Double TBR seems like a spew. I don't think the I don't think this ballista is that scary since. So that's six. Like they've done the five. They play two two ballista. Can also like you know. I want to I want to TBR their their life total. I want to draw a death shadow and draw a scourge. If we play if we just draw any spell, if we draw a lightning bolt to go to fourteen. I guess we're one counter short of lethal. TBR very important to beat Cauldron Grist. They also have Walking Blister Cauldron. We'll need to um, we'll need to top deck well. What is it? Death Shadow Scourge, Seek the Beast, Lightning Bolt. Oh, it's so close to being lethal. So they have lethal on the crackback. It's super easy. They also forgot to plus their Ballista. I attack. They block here. If I bolt Ballista, they ping me down to five. Cauldron here, three. I go to one. So I guess it's better to bolt. Okay, so I bolt the insect token. Cauldron here. Five, yeah. Is that better than just leaving these this back, though? I guess what's nice about leaving these back is I, I think I could just draw another bolt for lethal. What if you leave ballista and bolt insect? Yeah, I think I think I just I think I just try to draw lightning bolts. They get up to bolt in response to activation. Well I don't think I'm dead if I just pass, right? They have one, two, three counters. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just have to draw bolt. Gany, Twitch Prime, thank you, welcome back. Okay, so block here, activate. Yeah, I think I I think I bolt the ballistic response to the pump. Oh, they also oh, sorry, sorry, they, Am I taking bro ideas? I think it's time to try a Vexing Devil stack by soccer. I mean Vexing Devil's not a playable modern card. And Stalker doesn't, like, turn it into a playable one. But always take a brew ideas. It's like, why, why would you play Vexing Devil alongside Stalker when you could play a card at the quality of Dragon Rage's Channeler, Ragavan, Death Shadow, you know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? Okay, so the Druid will be 6 power with TBR. If I draw Lightning Bolt, they're at 14, 7 power. Problem is, they'll they'll block with at least one thing. So if I go Seek the Beast into Lightning Bolt land, we win. Seems a little less than likely. But you know, these cards like Vexing Devil that like have always been like too low power level, too low impact, just like not... Just not where they need to be. Um, it's 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 not like it's not like these cards become like better when like another just like aggro card gets printed. You know, these cards only get better like or like good enough to play in um, in situations where like a combo is printed with them, like something super duper powerful. Not like ooh, this is a, a one mana two two. If I if I what's it called? Okay, tough matches so far today. We'll finish this up, or, you know, or not, and uh, <laughs> uh, maybe get to the, the back of deck. It was going pretty well off stream last night, I don't know. These decks may be kind of high variants, too, I'm not sure. Got a mulligan this four lander. Not second one land, five, two Japan. Yeah, deck bad buy. All right, I'm going to read Kinrith's Royal Funeral and maybe regret it. I do like this hand, though. So I really want to keep these four cards pretty bad. I would really like to keep Questing Druid on the mulligan. 
But I think I should go Thoughtseize so I can try to protect my NT. Classic Thoughtseize into Dark Confidant. Vexing Devil Abiding Grace? Hell yeah. <laughs> hmm. Alright. Oh, thought they were Amulet Titan for sure. Pretty rare actually to see uh, Turn 1 Urza Saga out of cookbook decks. Oh, baby. This is how you unmold a 5. Okay, not taking Gristle Ram. Okay, uh, we need to have an intervention. Magical line opponents. Why Why are opponents keeping hands like this against me? It happened like last round with my Yawgmoth opponent. My keep opponent keeps the one lander. It happens so often. My opponents just keep these one landers against me. I don't understand. I'm, I'm going to take the Asimo. I, I just... I just feel like it used to be uh, people didn't used to keep hands like this against me. Like what like what has been happening? High upside keep Yeah, and then they always get there too. Dude, they also my opponent was on the fucking play and they kept that hand. High upside keep. And then they always get there. <laughs> or is this even getting there? I don't know. I think I'm gonna cycle now before they could draw a Bowmaster. Thank you for the unmulligan NT. Yeah, Mark Sleeves. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Needle? I can start the cookbooks in play. What would they needle here? Bloodstained Mire? <laughs> I mean, I guess. I guess, right? <laughs> I, 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 it seems like probably the right name. <laughs> Bone Shards of Scar Gristle Brand. So we can Fatal Push our Ragavan, make sure we use our NT card. Yeah, I, I think I think assuming you're getting the needle, which is like I'm kinda of surprised they don't have like a Nile Spell Bomb. I guess I've played these kind of decks without Nile Spell Bomb before. Oh, they're uh, they don't want to name a Street Wraith, they're also a Street Wraith deck. I, it seems and they're also they don't want to name Verdant Cat. I mean, not that they sold Vernon Catacombs in my yard. Okay. This is fine. This is a fine name, I think. So we need to kill them before they top deck a Gorio's Vengeance, I guess. I think I'll play this out because I have Seek the Beast in my deck. That is probably the next best draw, unfortunately. Big draw step from us. Big draw. So now their Saga token is chumping next turn. Probably better to fetch Professor Clock, but I put it Needle Bloodstain Mire. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is right to fetch when you have Stalker in play. Can't, yeah, this is 4-4, four, four, so I can't uh, kill it with the Stalker. Wait, am I supposed to know it? No, I'm holding it for empty. This cracking the token put a counter. No, this is only uh, real cards. Roth of 19 months, thank you, welcome back. Would have been, would have been, you know, if, if that did work, we should have cracked it, but it does not. Or they just discard a cookbook into turn, which is, that, that, that's also a, an incorrect play, I think. I think you would want to be able to top deck Asmo because now if they top deck Asmo, they can't cast it, right? So now they're Dobbs with nothing. That, I guess they could get Springleaf Drum and I still nothing they can get. 
Took a magic break with Sabana Pay. Thank you, thank you. Came back to the Tunnelinga stream. It was not disappointing. Yeah, the Tunnelinga stream was very funny. Okay, they got Haywire Might, which I'm, I'm kind of shocked they didn't grab that over Needle. Plays second Takanuma. And is dead on board. Oh, but they meant to sack their food token and fucked up. Okay, got it. Even if they could block the stalker like this, they would be dead. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and let them know. Oh, they figured it out. Great. Okay, game two. Lantern's in. Explosive's in. Chalice on zero can be good. It's um it's kinda of awkward if I have Chalice on zero and I want explosives on zero though. But Chalice on zero stops Asmo and Profane Tutor. Let's uh, let's not bring it in. Uh down for at least the first Alpine Moon also. There's a lot of sideboard cards. Maybe overboarding a little. The Bowmaster seemed pretty bad though. I guess if I'm playing double moon, I don't need triple explosives. I probably could just bring in two. They got like the six, maybe five one mana removal spells. Push kills bigger constructs. So I think I could do. Maybe maybe I'll do three. I think I think, I think I'll do like three two because you know also bolt them for scourge and bolt yourself for shadow sometimes. Trim one more card. Bowmasters is good against Gristlebrand. Yeah, that's true. Does it just solo Gristlebrand? Kind of does, doesn't it? Okay, I got to figure this out then. And I want these Seek the Beast too. So maybe... Stalker's out? And trim one Questing Druid? Any chance you trim a Scourge? Yeah, maybe we should trim a Scourge instead if we're going to cut the uh, Stalkers. Maybe even like this. Just to I think you can never cut Wraith. It, it is just like such an important enabler. I think it's like actually uncuttable. It's like for with Death in your Death Shadow NT Scourge deck. I mean, why do we trim some Scourge? I think you can never never trim them. It's like it's like whenever you have Wraith plus NT, you're like, okay, I'm gonna get a two for one off of this probably, even if they kill it. It's then like just makes playing this kind of card so much better. Oh yeah, I forgot to read Kinrith's Royal Funeral. Thank you for reminding me. It is it is it is worth reading though, right? <laughs> this is gonna be worth reading. I I'm sure it will be. Okay, I'll take this Urza saga. Um they were gonna turn to Gorio's me, which is pretty scary. Do we take the Also this is a blank card against me, right? Oh, I mean Alpine Moon, I guess. I mean, they should have more legends than uh Gorios. Okay, Kinrith's Royal Funeral. Reading it. Four mana, legendary enchantment. When an ETB exile up to two legendary cards from graveyards, draw up to X cards and lose X life, where X is the greatest mana value. Legendary spells you cast cost one less for each card cast with Royal Funeral. Hmm. Well, some text for sure. Cards four mana. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Are there any good four mana card draw spells in modern? Any good four mana card draw engines in this format? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. I'm happy I read it. Okay, Death Shadow's nice to pick up there. So my opponent misses their land drop here, which they might. I'm pretty happy. Okay, so spend a Profane Tutor. Second Death Shadow. Honestly, Thoughtsy Shadow Shadow this turn seems great. Boatmasters is just kind of too expensive this game, too. I know it like kills this Haywire Might, but who cares about this Haywire Might? <laughs> and then I flip another Bowmasters. But they chump anyways. Yeah, I'm just gonna go Thoughtsy Shadow Shadow. And then let's get another Blood Crypt too. The second Terra Sunder and Haywire Might were their draws. 
nearly blank cards against me is very funny. This Coco would be good. Uh, no, I, I, I basically have not uh, <laughs> included that card in any deck for a long time. Better options. <laughs> Enough with the disenchant opponent. I get it. I get it. Okay, their hand is just two Terra Sunders. So we go to 18. I bolt myself down to 5. These are 8, 8, 16. Plus 3, 19. If I was off by 1, now we are. I guess off by 2. All right, we can beat. Our deck is very good at beating double. T Up against a Gigantha deck. I'm going to mulligan. Close though. Could be anything, huh? So we do need another Street Wraith to play Shadow turn one. Wouldn't that be nice though? Put us on a mold of five. So maybe up against Tron. So now I don't really want to draw a land, so I think I'll fetch shock now. We're already we're kind of flooded right now. Bolt myself and Exile seems very good. Big brain. I think what I'll probably do is bolt them and play Scourge next turn, right? I'm gonna see an Urza's Tower. Okay. Not an Urza's Tower, so So now what? Uh, I think actually still both them play 5-5 five, five Scourge seems very, very good against Murktide this this turn. Would have loved to have you last last turn, huh? I think I'm still not doing anything besides this, so. Everyone in number of Unearth when we discard creatures. Or is that not happening enough? I mean... I, Unearth is interesting. I like that it's another cycle card. Uh, that's like trigger, like draw two with empty. Uh, I think you could play it in straight black red, maybe. But I also like tend to not like playing Unearth in decks with no three mana creatures. Oh, so they're not. Yeah, they're not Merc Tide. They're playing Gigantha, huh? Okay, so they have a Lightning Bolt with this tack. I'm gonna take this hit. Fair Reach, yeah, maybe Grixis Shadow. Mardu Inti Captain. Yeah, you can play Mardu Shadow. I One thing I always liked about Mardu Shadow is it's like not that hard to play Obosh. So if you play Inti, you don't get it. Oh, back when I was on my squee. It's like, y'all, they they really printed Goblin Rabble Master with Escape, and nobody cared. <laughs> and it wasn't even good. <laughs> and it wasn't even good. Always, always blew my mind. Oh, domain zoo, duh, domain zoo. More like duh, domain zoo. Yeah, it wasn't even good yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't want to cycle street wraith because then I die to tribal flames. Squeed doesn't hit for like 19 like Ravel, so unfortunately not good enough. I mean, Ravel's also not good enough. This, this, this card is way better than Goblin Ravel Master. <laughs> you also get to like hit for 3 the turn you play it instead of 1. It hits for 3 the turn you play it, then 4. Ravel Master is 1 and then 5. So it's like out. So it takes Ravel Master 3 turns to outpace Squee. I guess, I guess like kind of other goblins, right? So. Maybe not. Goblin Rabble Master at home. Yeah, no, Squee, Squee is is a, is better than Goblin Rabble Master. It, it is literally Goblin Rabble Master with escape, dude. It's crazy. But it's just like these effects are so out, out of date. One, then six. Okay, it's one, and then... Oh, four plus two, right? Yeah, but, but, but still, Squee is, Squee is three, then four, so seven. So it takes, takes Rabble Master three turns. 
Gruel 12, L12 Rabbles, Unbeatable, hell yeah. I got Painful Truths just about screen. I mean, this is, this is pre-Orcish Bowmasters. <laughs> Painful Truths is okay. I don't know, we're an Obosh deck. But yeah, playing a deck like this with no Bowmasters is like, just very out of date also. Dude, they're seeking the beast, they're seeking their death. I think Esper Mentor has any potential. I mean, that deck is just so bad against Bowmasters, too. I, there's so many like bad decks I've played in the past or like mid decks that also just get soloed by Bowmasters and yeah, I, I, Helping Hand is interesting because you can move away from black, but I don't know. All right, versus the Gun Pioneer. We've I think we've done that, haven't we? Rabble isn't legendary. Uh, it's an that's an upside for sure. All right, you got your three chump blockers. I'm still not trying to die to Tribal Flames. If they go double burn spell, if they go like Tribal Flames Bolt next turn, oh, I guess could we should we play around that? If we draw a land, we win because we can kill one of their things with Stalker. So if I go, if I draw a land, NT Lightning Bolt Fatal Push, is that it? I think that's it. Land or oh, Ragavan, land NT Ragavan Lightning Bolt Fatal Push. Actually, just like do the math, right? So I have three bolts left in the deck. Seven. Oh, so how many, how many, any, also any land. So there are 13 lands left. 20, 23, oh, Bowmasters 2, 27, 28, 29. So if we cycle Street Wraith, we are above 50% to win the game right now. If we miss and they have Tribal Flames in their hand... Oh, we can also draw Thought Seize to hit the Tribal Flames. I'm going to cycle the Street Wraith. Okay, redraw. Whew. <laughs> I also, I also, also Questing Druid. I, I guess with most of your spells and all, and all of your lands win the game, it's probably right to cycle Street Wraith there, huh? <laughs> Turn four, negative thirty six, huh? It's an updated state of modern. Playing again the deck with Electro Max, Will of Fate, Test with Bowmasters. The problem is all of these decks that are like, yeah, I'm gonna play Orcish Bowmasters and then I'm gonna wheel. They you it see this is what you do. You go end of turn bowmasters, untap, wheel, and then your opponent, they cast bowmasters, they kill your bowmasters, and then they ping you for seven and they laugh at you. They tweet about you. It's awful. A fate worse than death. I think they'll probably cut their Ragavans because I'm a Bowmaster deck and then my Bowmasters will be pretty bad. I'll play one TBR also. Okay, keep this. I haven't kicked a Scourge in a long time, but I have in the past. I remember there's one time I like missed Lethal because I could have kicked Scourge actually. Why Orc instead of Ragavan? Asking to understand. Uh, I'm not convinced that they're playing Bowmaster in their deck. And, uh, like, Rag like Ragavan plus removal spells look like, pretty good against them. But, like, I think that they're going to cut their Ragavans post board, and there's a good chance my Bowmasters is, like, just like, raise the alarm against their Tarmogoyfs and Kavus and Scions, that kind of stuff. Because they're playing Triumphs, and they're likely still on Scion, not like the Mingu build, which I like a lot. Average Joe, 34 months. Thank you. Welcome back, also. I think I was cooking with Catabounce last night. It's the, the sweet, sweet uh, subathon madness. Catabounce madness. I'd love to see it if uh, y'all have like a list handy. Let's take a one street wraith right now. If I draw shadow, I'll, I'll be pretty happy to go. Okay, yeah, push shadow. That is to bolt. Okay, play scourge then. Play scourge and then be like happy enough to take this hit too. Then my Scourge is a 5-5. Five, five. What's the Mingu build? Mingu uh, ended up cutting... I think this is very interesting. Mingu ended up cutting the Triumphs from the mana base and Scion. Scion can only be cast turn 2 off off, uh, off of a Triumph. So, ended up cutting, so it's just playing Kavu, Binding, Tribal Flames, and uh, Neshoba Brawler as like your domain cards. And then Everland enters untapped. 
and then is also playing, I think, Tidebinder. For brewing this deck with Souls of the Lost and Bloodgast. I, I guess I guess you have eight discard outlets for Bloodgast. It's like a little low. And you have no other good card to discard to Souls, which is tough. Interesting, though. Hmm. Would you be interested in doing a 23 Magic review? And what you'd like to see for 2024? Any decks you'd like to see get support? I'm not that interested in, like... Here's the decks that I want to see get support. I, I just like I just like to play a lot of different stuff. Uh you know what I mean? I like to I like to play a lot of different stuff and I like to try a lot of different things. I don't necessarily like to root for one specific strategy. But also I did like I did like a season review video that was like a ton of work and did not uh do very well, so I'm not necessarily very likely to. Uh, do a lot of content like that going forward, but if I, but but also like just like me, I I I reviewed my um, Wilds of Eldraine season of brewing, and like that video took me like fifteen twenty hours or something. And so like to do the whole year is like that's what like a hundred hours, hundred twenty hours. It seems uh, like I don't got the time. It's like a whole month of streams. So we can maybe stalk or kill Cyan if we're not dead right now. Oops, dead right now. Game three. I watched it. I mean, I, I like the video. I'm proud of the video. It's like probably my highest effort <laughs> effort video I've ever made. But that's how that's how it is. Like when you when you YouTube and stream, it's like a lot of times your highest effort content is just like not exactly what you're always doing, and those kind of videos tend to not do as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I also don't usually love, like, year in review videos either. I thought the set review video was more interesting because it was more concise and, like, very, like, like focused on exactly what Bruce happened last season. A little bit more fresh, too. But it was the first time I ever skipped a J-Man poker video. <laughs> <laughs> was uh was the the year in review because it's like i like i watched all i watched all your other videos jamin <laughs> i watched every single one why do i need to watch the year in review <laughs> which you were talking about yeah so i i did a review on all of the brews from the lost caverns of ixalan season and that was like a particularly interesting or not not, not, sorry, not the, the wilds of all drain season and that one was like really interesting too we had like so many sick cards with like cauldron and bean i guess i guess this season would probably be a little shorter Okay, put it in the tank here. With interesting hand, let's keep. I think we'll get swamp here. Mm. I think I'll go. Actually, blood crypt and maybe get mountain off this. Put on the mulligan to six. I think the video would have been a bit from being shorter. I agree. Yeah, it was just so much to cover. I I, I always try to go. I always try to make them as short as possible, and they're really long. I don't know how to make them shorter. Good feedback for sure. That's uh, 13 points of burn and a Celestial Purge. I think let's just take some of the heat off. It's five life, gives us a lot more room to work with. Very funny that we both kept just like removal hands. Archive's Druid turned to be an option. Not against their removal dot hand. <laughs> against all removal spells, we're gonna we're gonna draw some cards with our questing druid. Feels like an article might be a better format for season review. Uh maybe. I don't know. Like I I love a, a, any magic player who reads articles, I love you. You are you know, you are like actively engaging in the game in a very healthy way that's like really important and has like a lot of history, but as someone who wrote articles, like two articles a week for years, or like a year and a half, two years, uh, people don't read that shit. <laughs> people, they they, they just uh, don't really read it. Yeah. Oh, you just say it's a sideboard guy, but really, it's a, a trap year in review. Love it. They, yeah, like, for all, all, like, the deck guides I do, like, you know, most people, they just, I don't blame them either, but they, they just, you know, read the deck list, <laughs> read the cyber guide, leave, got stuff to do. Okay, a Scourge and another Seek the Beast. 
I'm gonna get a tapped blood crypt here. You probably have to go cast Questing Druid, cast uh, Scourge. They have a tribal flames and a and a and a purge, but you know we kind of get you know just super good three for one if that's there. Or the dingo counterbalance deck, dude, I love it. I've been wanting to play Chandler counterbalance for the longest time. Don't want to play this card, but the thing is, like, yeah, you are just missing like you're missing something, so you kind of have to play like Telling Time or Omen or. Okay, also, this is a lot of, like, this is, like, this sure is three telling times and four Omen of the Seas to go with two counterbalance, but what do I know? I know. Ooh. You got a land? No land, Tom. Well, we can hit you for a lot. Why do people keep bringing in Terra Sunder against me? I don't understand. Okay, so if I bolt them, four, four, so that's going to be eight plus three. Down there, and they'll go down to eight. I feel like I have to take the tribal flames because I just died to another one really easy. Seems like a six damage lightning bolt is worth casting. Or oh, seven damage because of the questing druid. Not playing the other druid because of the explosives, obviously. Yeah, you could play brainstorm. I don't know. I I don't know. The, it, the the tough part about doing this building around a card like counterbalance is if you're gonna play three telling time four omens and you only have two counterbalance, like you have to play like at least three, probably four. I know they're bad at multiples. Think of John Saga. Yeah, maybe. I don't have Gigantha though. Inti, <laughs> fighter of the <laughs> domain zoo. Champion of the sun, sun, sun. I think it's funny we did all that work just to get them to slightly higher life total than us. <laughs> Salty Forest, you could pick extra copies. Yeah, you could. Oh, I just miss Mystic Sanctuary so much. Too bad counter Counterbalance is not on Arena, right? That's true, and multiples you can like fetch or like surveil and response. Okay. Well played. Very, very timely for them to be able to double spell this turn. Let's get in, dude. Let's get in. What was the cattle band? It was a pre band. If my opponent just plays Kavu next turn, I can attack and then shrink it with Stalker. If I feel like I'm really scared of it. Mostly scared of it because they'll be able to loot away this uh, Terra Sunder. Wait, I mean... Are she just going to die to this? Let's take Devil Flames. That's uh, 2 mana 14-14. Yeah, we'll play against two Terra Sunder opponents in a row. Can I also ban after the first pre monitor? Oh, I thought it was one of the pre banned ones. I didn't know it was banned that fast. We also can't really die to burn because they would have they'd have like basic mountain or something. Yes, yeah, so their hand is Kabu, Giganta, Terra Sunder, Tribal Flames. Two mystery cards with the draw. Uh just guy ascendancy testing went poorly. <laughs> Obviously poorly. It was so cool. Got a basic planes or island over there? Two flames are gone. I thought they drew a third flames that we saw. Maybe I'm misremembering. Hmm. They have to binding the stalker. Okay, so binding stalker, play Kabu. Okay, so their hand is just Terra Sunder Giganta then. But then they can Terra Sunder the Scourge next turn. Okay, so we do need to... We have a lot of lethal top decks here, too. 
This at least means Terra Sunder is not uh, not live. Yeah, which I, I was thinking that this morning. Whichever chatter said we obviously are not going to see Just Guys and NCT today was right. It's coping kind of hard. This is why we test this stuff off stream too. You know, who would run a testing stream? How much you charge Renos when you join in? I just don't. I just don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't really care or know to. I like. I think my stream is interesting because the decks are like tested off stream and refined and cool and. I, I also just don't want to be in front of a camera every hour of the day, and it's nice. Uh, yeah, what did we lose against? I think it was a Yawgmoth. On the play. It's Mulligan. And it could be anything. 64 card deck, huh? What you putting back here? I'm, I'm like, very tempted to not put back the Third Street Wraith, because if we draw a Shadow, we can play it turn one. Yeah, Sprout Swarm was not very good. I mean, so, like, I think that the Sprout Swarm plus Intruder Alarm slash Jeskai Ascendancy combo is kind of cool. It goes infinite pretty fast. Um, Intruder Alarm is less powerful than Jeskai Ascendancy, but plays better with... Um, it's just, like, less color intensive is the big thing. Uh the five color Jeskai Ascendancy build was ambitious to say the least. I even briefly tried to play Agatha Soul Cauldron plus Gigantha um, in the Ascendancy build and ended up feeling like I couldn't get it to where like the Gigantha tap ability was like that crazy of a payoff, but maybe you could. Because um, it, it is cool to me that you can go turn one like Cookbook, Cauldron. Um, <laughs> wait, I think you have to also have a creature, but I don't know. It, just be, being able to like cauldron gigant put gigant in hand discard it cauldron onto a creature then tap it for ascendancy with mana floating is cool to me um back stomping ground i think it seems like a little too greedy i'm gonna go, i'm gonna put back a street wraith i'm gonna put back a street wraith although we do have to wait the mandatory two minutes for opponent to show up of course put back push i'm, I'm gonna put back a street wraith and then see what happens or maybe i'll put back push okay i'm gonna put back push <laughs> Just come on, just imagine, and and then and then I fetch shock to in, increase the chances we draw shadow. I'm done. I'm I'm manifesting this turn one death shadow. Come on, dude. <laughs> I guess we'll take the ragavan, but I sh I I now I wish I put back stomping ground. Team of God, six months. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, this is the thing with Street Wraith that people, you know, this is, I think, a very clear lesson to people who go, Dude, the Goblin Guide! I kept, strip I kept Stripple Street Wraith and Fetch Shocked against Goblin Guide! No! No! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, people always go, oh, just play 4 Street Wraith in every deck, and then it's 56 card deck, but it's not really how it works. Okay, I'm definitely bolting them. I might still win. <laughs> I played a two minute six six. Hmm. Did I really draw another land? Okay. You got two burn spells you can cast. Tink, 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 tink. tink. Ba -ba. Bolcha, bolcha. <laughs> Hey, Spike, I just want to say I'm a huge fan. I love your stream so much. Love it. <laughs> How does it take this long every time? Fucking shit, dude. <laughs> All day today. <laughs> Okay, since Street Wraith is never cuttable, this is the matchup. <laughs> it's lag. That is the, some crazy lag. <laughs> it's like the third time today. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this this is the cut Street Wraith matchup. So funny, the triple street with hand is against Burn too. Okay, on to play. 
Yeah, they they did they did figure out adequate psychic damage. Ease for Sanctifier. I'm going to team her Battle Rage over Sanctifier, I think. Also not sure that people that burn players are playing Sanctifier anymore. Yeah, I have a lot of twos ourselves. You could you could play one though, I'd be okay. I cast raise the alarm. Maybe I shouldn't have kept a hand with no shadows, but also like I have um double basic plus turn one removal spell. Kind of hard to mull again. Oh, they just draw a shadow, dude. Okay, so if I go stomping ground, questing druid shadow, attack for throw. We have thirteen after my attack. I'll have seven nine plus the bolt. Yeah, seems seems like the play. Times Sunday. I'm planning on it. Yeah, I'm I'm signed up. I I committed to it, but also I'm DMing for the first time that evening. But I don't think it, I don't think the tournament will be super long because it's I, I don't know how many people are going to sign up. I hope that it's the longest tournament I've ever played though. Okay, so dash Ragavan, attack with everything. They block the shadow. I bolt them down to ten. Uh, six, seven, eight. Hit any burn spell off Ragu and I win. Otherwise, I'm dead to two, two turn to two burn spells if I don't leave back the questing druid. Otherwise, I'm dead to three. So the uh, uh, so I can either play round three burn spells. I guess I'm I, I could just I'm just going to leave the druid back. I think ten. I guess I should have played my burning catacombs to make them block the shadow. I'm kind of I'm happy enough if they do this though. I think. Like a burn spell record, but yeah, I said that. Should have played this first though. Did the three burn spells if the if that's their three cards. Even lethal. I mean, if it's just not, not blocking like that, it would have been. And if we get if we do that, we put ourselves dead to two burn spells, which is pretty likely. Three castable that turn a lot less likely. Okay, so now that we confirm, see, uh, sanctify. I'll bring in a couple of these. Yeah, that game one was super funny. <laughs> that game was so funny. <laughs> DM direct message, uh, dungeon master. Gonna. Never mind. <laughs> I'm missing something. Ambler's pre frame burn decks. Yeah, we ban banded modern. We'd also be playing it in this deck, probably over Street Wraith. Timeless Brain, where Luris. Although, what's, fun what's also very funny about that comment is that uh, when Luris was legal, burn players also didn't play it. It gets protection from black, use sign, two damage, triple rest. Yes, that's how it works. What if this deck is good enough for timeless? I mean, I just don't think you should be trying to play, like, medium, medium plus modern decks in timeless. Like, time, timeless is, like, a much more powerful format than modern. You know, you're, this, it's a field of the dead, once upon a time, mystic sanctuary, dark ritual, brainstorm, source of plowsayers, uro oko format. You know, just why, 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 why play something like this? Okay, I'm keeping this against uh, burn. I play Larson Burn, and you are a hero. I commend you. That's true. You do get Luris. I'm actually going to Thoughtseize here because of Sanctifier. I mean, every opponent just gets there. Huh? Maybe I'll just take their one drop. None of them played it because they didn't think it was worth the side. So, yeah, exactly. It's so funny. <laughs> Taking two pass for the 44 years. Let's go, dude. Long fucking time, huh? 
Okay, so am I just going to go <clears throat> Fetch Shock Two Shadows, or am I going to go Basic Swamp Two Shadows? I mean, Fetch Shock is... They have Boros Charm, right? Uh, with the Boros Charm. So they go Land, Boros Charm. Okay, Fetch Shock down to seven. I think I'm going to get Swamp. So I'm not the, just did the Boros Charm Burn spell. Oh, the Burnless played it before it was banned? No. Uh, the majority of them did not play Lurus. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. I, I promise I was streaming the whole time and was yelling about it like every day. Four one. I played Boros Prowse when Lurus was legal and was consistently either three mana against Thoughtseize or six mana removal bait. Feel bad so often. Yeah, but like you don't understand. If you say this is what Burn players would say too, it just gets countered. It just gets Thoughtseize. It just gets removed. It is a free eighth card, dude. It's a free fucking eighth card. It's free. It costs you one sideboard slot. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't need to do very much to be like broken. That's not Luris isn't Luris isn't insane because it's a three minute two two that lets you play stuff in the graveyard. It's insane because it's a free eighth card. I'm just gonna cycle like one street wraith now. Of Bowmasters. I'm gonna save the other one to trigger Stalker potentially though. Yeah, like like if that if they, if it gets thoughts used or countered or removed, your opponent used a card they had to draw for a card you didn't have to draw, and it's a free zero for one. Are we still talking about compared to twenty twenty four? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Same logic on Giganta? Yeah. I've almost never put a deck, let alone cast it. Well, if you've almost never put it in your deck, you've you, you're less likely to cast it. But I cast I cast Gigantha all the time, and it wins me games all the time, like with an with an incredible frequency. Okay, so do we play Scourge or do we go Ragavan Bowmaster? I mean, the Ragavan or Ragavan Stalker. Ragavan doesn't do very much. Let me just attack. Okay, I think with this draw. I'm going to bolt the halfling and then play another stalker. Stalker's pretty good against Yogg. Yeah, I, I, Cherry said a while. I, I, are, we, are we really like discussing like why companions are broken in 2024? A lot of other magic players seem to have a preferred strategy with shores, combo midrange, control aggro. I don't I, I've transcended that. I'm on a I'm like Gojo when he discovers the purple thing or something. I don't I don't really actually understand exactly what happened in that scene. <laughs> I, uh, I I've transcended though. I no longer am bound by silly things like okay. Wait, if that's choice me for blood crypt? I just don't get green very aggressively if that's what you're saying. Um, Scourge is getting chump blocked forever. I kind of think I just Bowmasters. They can't kill Scourge. Yeah, but they just, all they need to find is like a young wolf or a grist to just chump it forever. I can't give it trample. About empty. Think of Watsy just banned the Busted Companions and made more so most constructed decks would have one i mean to be honest make printing more companions that is, that is the first time i've ever seen someone be like what we needed was more companions <laughs> that was the problem was not every deck got one but i don't know i i i i i also don't hate despise companions as much as most people but they were like incredibly big design mistake i think but yeah, but yes, reducing the number of like, not, like, so like th this was definitely the era. Companions were printed in the era of trying to, um, tr tr trying to have uh, mana sinks for like every deck. That was like definitely the intention behind them, and like why, why, why we saw mechanics like escape. We saw mechanics like companion. Uh, there was another one in that era too. Companion escape. There's one more big one that were like flood insurance. And so it's like, you can, it's, it's hard to stop mana screw, but if you can, if you can just like give people big flood insurance, is it mystic sanctuary? Maybe, maybe it was mystic sanctuary, but if you can give people these like insurances to flooding, then 
they just play more lands and they don't uh, mana screw very often. MDFCs, yeah, MDFCs, right? MDFCs are also those. Adventures, adventures also kind of yeah, but I think like a little less so maybe. But yeah, that that was the intention. The MDFCs, they're like they're like um. The, the cards that are like lands on one side and spells on the other side, like uh, Seagate Restoration or uh, <clears throat> Amaria's Call, those kind of cards, where, like, obviously, like, this is either a land or a spell, so it's going to give you, you know, mana flood insurance and, and mana screw insurance. Do you think that has something to do with the commander popularity, the fact that you flood this often because you always have your commander? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say it had something to do with it. The Oko, I mean, Oko's not like a Mana Flood, Mana Screw insurance card. But very broken. It was quite quite the era, huh? Quite the era. We survived it. Survived it, but we're still scarred. Kind of surprised they blocked with the Yogg. The two walls. I don't think commander is popular because commanders are flood insurance. I I don't think super consciously, but I do feel like that is a really big part of the format. I don't know. Like I remember, um, like when I played commander, one of my good friends, he had this one salt eye commander that like lets you like draw seven at the beginning of your turn or something, and his deck was just all ramp. His deck was just all like mana crypt. <laughs> Dark Ritual, everything. Just just try to cast her on turn one or turn two or as fast as he could every game. And <laughs> he loved it. He loved that he never got flooded, basically. Cord for three in response. Yeah, Damian. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, like, super consciously one of the reasons why Commander's popular. I don't think it's probably, like, discussed that much that that is a big part of it. But I do think it, I do think it is a big part of it also. Okay, interesting. Yeah, some players, commander players, play thirty lands of ninety nine cards. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that's a good way to create some content, right? Yeah, like commander players, the number of uh, lands in their deck. I need to. I I took some of my cards out of my EDH deck because I needed um. I need them for modern. But I need to put them back in. It being rotation proof and casual is really a thing. I think that's the biggest thing, for sure. It's also like I think social dynamic is a big part of it i like i like commander i i don't get to play very often i have a a magda deck that's pretty you know i got like a lot of good cards in there but no infinite combos and i got uh a really 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 funny sea monster deck i think what's nice about commander too is it's like it can be it's a, it's just like a lot of different things to different people you know like there, like there's, there's a lot of different reasons why people like the the format. Am I going to Denver? Uh, I'm not going to Denver. It's Esther's birthday and our anniversary, like that weekend. So uh, we're gonna do something. We haven't decided exactly what yet. Uh, top three decks. I don't know though. Probably Yogmoth. Birth anniversary. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what usually what we call it. We play Popper Commander. Is your commander an uncommon? I did that one time. If that's, if that's the case, we had like, we played Popper Commander where our commander could be an uncommon. And I picked, um, Curious Homunculus. What's the name of the card? Yeah, Curious Homunculus. And I played, I built a High Tide Storm deck. <laughs> High tide storm deck with basically just like brawl in the command zone. Got to cast like frantic surge and uh, snap those kind of cards. I'm gonna do game two. Consider yourself stalker package compares to DSC bubble package. Well, one thing is stalker is eight is four cards instead of eight. Um. So, like, you really have to go DRC Bobble over, like, Questing Druid or Ragavan. I think the Scourge is, uh, 
when you cast oh it is a, it is a cast trigger right i forgot counterable by dude imagine getting your kicked scourge tide bindered you kick the scourge they tide binder the trigger and magic online is bugged to where the, the scourge just dies <laughs> it shouldn't work that way in paper but it works that way on magic online okay i'm gonna use restroom beer back Okay, I'm gonna be on the play. What's up? It's me, your friend. Uh, keep, and I'm not gonna cycle Street Wraith turn one, so I can trigger Inti. Basic Swamp, my opponent's out of Mulligan to six. Just gonna push a halfling off a cliff. Nothing wrong with that. No moral qualms there. Gonna cycle the street wraith in there. Upkeep to play around. Any orcs? Or maybe I could bait orcish bowmasters with street wraith on my turn. Let's do that. Oh, rough. <laughs> Take that. Okay, I probably could see the thought sees here if I had to guess. Okay, opponent's a fighter. Never mind. They took a draw stab. We can commend them for that. Okay, game three. Lost the Yogg in round one. Tough game where like we, we just could barely not TBR for enough. <clears throat> yeah, looks like they brought in uh, Cursed Totem Hate. Maybe we should be playing some Cursed Totems, but they bring it in every matchup that might have Totem. On the draw, can trigger Descend on Stalker. Although if we do that, then we have we don't we don't get the, the NT. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep though. This hand's pretty high upside. Stalker is your best one drop in the matchup and. It's 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 really a matchup where you kind of have to keep these higher upside hands. I just kind of I, I need to draw land in the top three. Um, put it on a mulligan to five, which young Athena. Okay, so I will street race so our stalker grows. Oh boy, well, I believe in the third card down. This curse turned that good against Yogg. So much harder correct move on their list. Well, I mean. It, it is very good against them, yes. <laughs> they have answers to it. You know, the classic dies to Doomblade, I guess. It can be removed. Um, how scared of Grist are we here? I think not that scared. I'm not going to discard anything, but I, I want to get, get this NT online. Yeah, always, always third card down in this spot. Like, it, it, Curse Totem is not two mana win the game against Yogg, but <laughs> it, it is it is pretty close to that until they remove it, you know. <laughs> you think they'd play Black Knight if they had it? Maybe, not necessarily. If it's Swamp, they probably can play Forest. So I had no attacks. Should I thought seize before I do anything? I don't think I need to be that worried about Veil. I also like that if they have cord for one, they cord now. I'm discarding Terminate, seeing that hand. Discarding Swamp is also kind of appealing because that triggers Descend.
Also, maybe maybe should have put the counter on the stalker so that it's better for TBR. But also being able to attack with NT next turn is valuable. All right, desperation attack. Here's Bowmaster Mystery Card. Okay, but desperation attack maybe not true. GG though, right? Seven, eight. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I TBR my Stalker, discard the bolt. So, got a revenge against Yogg to 4 1 this league. Let's. Let's do one more with this deck, I think. I'm gonna get a little bit more of an opinion on it. Ha 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 ha.